God, what is the next song? I, I'm not getting it. It's it's not doing it. <laughs> it's not. I tried that. Hmm. There it is. God, well, God is great. And he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great, he is, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. God is great, and he's greatly to be praised. God is great in my soul. Coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. 
coming down when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way oh the glory of the Lord is coming down yes coming down 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 coming down 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 the glory of the Lord is coming down when the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way Oh, the glory of the Lord is coming down. Oh, coming down, 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 coming down, down, down. Oh, the glory of the Lord is coming down. When the saints begin to pray for the Lord to have his way. Oh, the glory of the Lord is coming down. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Here I am. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. In the Old Testament, 
in the tabernacle plan in particularly, which is one of our prayer patterns, amen, we see that God placed, particularly he, he placed the altar of sacrifice right in front of that, um, right after they, they went into that 30-foot gate in Jesus' name. That altar of sacrifice can represent a lot of things, but tonight I think it needs to represent our repentance towards God in Jesus' name. And so tonight, let's go ahead and lift up our hands and begin to close our eyes and begin to offer up a prayer to the Lord. Ask the Lord to forgive us in Jesus' name. Lord Jesus, tonight, tonight, here we are, Lord God. Hallelujah. We give all of ourselves to you, Lord. Amen. Oh, we ask for your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Let your blood again, Lord God, just cleanse us. Hallelujah. Amen, Lord God. Cleanse us from all filthiness of the flesh and of the spirit. Praise God. Oh, let your spirit move through us now, Lord God, by that way of renewal. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise God. Amen. That's it, Lord God. We ask for your forgiveness, Lord God. We know that you are faithful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You are faithful, Lord God. Amen. Yes, touch, Lord God, and strengthen in the name of Jesus. We offer that sacrifice on that altar right now, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for, for your forgiveness in the name of Jesus. Lord, we would be lost without your blood. Here we are, Lord God, again, being renewed in the spirit. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I give you praise in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Now we can move on now. The scripture says, once we have that, 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 that situation taken care of in our life, which we can, then the scripture says we can come into his throne room, we can come into that throne room boldly with grace in Jesus' name. So if you have needs right now, I'm going to ask you just to go ahead and lift those up. If you have people that are on your heart right now, let's go to the Lord with confidence now. Praise God. Come on, we've been forgiven. We've been cleansed by the blood of the Lamb. That gives us tremendous access to the throne room of God. Let's take advantage of that right now in Jesus' name. Lord God, I pray. I pray for these people in this church right now, Lord God, that by the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Lord God, they will not only be delivered but Lord Jesus there is a tremendous spirit Lord God in this place that has broken every yoke in Jesus name I thank you for it Lord God I praise you for it Lord God it is absolutely absolutely the confidence that I have in you right now in the name of Jesus oh hallelujah hallelujah Jesus yes Lord God yes we can have absolute confidence in you in the name of Jesus Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be to the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's right. Come on. I'm telling you, we can take a few minutes here. Come on. There's nothing that God can't do. In fact, the scripture says he's able to do exceeding abundant above all that we ask or think. Come on, it's according to the power that works in us. Once we get forgiven, once the blood of Jesus Christ covers us, I'm telling you, we have access and we have authority in the name of Jesus. That's it, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We take authority in these areas, Lord God. Many prayer requests, many people, Lord God, need the touch of the Lord here tonight, not only in this building, but all over this, in this city, in this county, in this state, in this region, Lord God, all over this, co this country in the name of Jesus. Jesus. Yes, Lord God, I'm trusting you. I'm believing you, Lord God, for these things to happen. Yes. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
praises be unto the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, yes, Lord God, we do. We give you praises, and we give you glory, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, God. Thank you for this access. Thank you for this confidence, Lord God. Mm, thank you for this confidence, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord God. Praise you, Jesus. The sacrifice of praise continually, which is the fruit of our lips. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, that's right. He is such a great God. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Oh, hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, the strong tower where the righteous run in and are safe. Thank you, Jesus. Praise you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord God. Praise God. You can be seated if you want to. Praise God. We're in the midst of the second lesson here that we're talking about tonight. Um, uh, and again, trying to make some sense of suffering. And um, suffering, uh, you know, is one of those things that's um, like forgiveness. Praise God. It's one of those areas that sometimes... Um, that we don't think that we should have to have any of it in our lives. We don't think that we should have to have any of that type of thing. Um, and But it's, it is what it is. It's, it happens in Jesus' name, and so we have to learn to deal with it. And God is helping us, isn't he? Praise God. Praise God. Tonight we're going to move on. Last week we talked about we do have the freedom to choose. And sometimes we need to choose to suffer with the people of God. Sometimes just living for God is going to cause that kind of um, uh, a pain in our life, and we must be willing to do that. Um, and so God can help us to be strengthened on that end. Um, tonight we're going to look more into the aspect of growing while we're suffering. And, and a lot of times this is what will happen sometimes. God will bring growth into our life and um, in such uh, unique ways in Jesus' name. Praise God. Um, there's a couple of things that we can do here. There's a story that's told. I don't know. I don't know if you have it in your book or not. Do you have the story of Billy Cole? You don't have that story in your books? You don't? Okay. They have the story here, and they recommend that we read it. So um, I'm going to go ahead and do that um, because they're making kind of a, a little bit of a parallel between Moses and Billy Cole when he was called into the to the. Um, um, uh, the, the foreign mission field, and um, this is maybe something that will, will help somebody here to know that we do have people in this modern age that are doing uh, similar things. We pick up Brother Cole's story in 1961, 1961. The day finally came for us to board the ship to Thailand. He was, one of the, he was the first United Pentecostal Church or apostolic minister to go to Thailand. Uh, we had a cabin on a freighter above the deck in the, on the highest part of the ship, and it was a rough ride. The first day out, we encountered a storm. The ship was swiftly picked up on huge waves, and just as suddenly it swooped down, submerged momentarily under the water, and it scared me half to death when the waves splashed over the porthole. We were on that ship for three weeks. Can you imagine that, being on a ship for three weeks to go? somewhere, and we saw nothing but water. And finally, the ship made port at Manila, and we were happy to see dry land again. The Buckmillers were missionaries in Manila at, during that time, and they had churches started on Luzon Island and Negros Island, and there were about 200 believers in the whole nation. The Buckmillers came to the ship about midnight, and the captain of the ship told us we could go home with them because the ship was scheduled to be in port for three days. He said, check back with us tomorrow, and we stayed up all night talking to those wonderful missionaries, and about 6 a.m. in the morning, we went to bed and slept for a couple of hours. We got up and went shopping in the market. We had about $700 to our name, 
and I had kept $10 with me while we were on land. I did not want to spend too much of what we had. Most of our money had been left on the ship. After we finished shopping, we tried to call the ship and could not get through. We called the agency and they did not know what to tell us. After checking, they told us that our ship had sailed that morning. <laughs> Um, needless to say, I was, uh, I was quite scared, and, and my wife wailed and cried. Brother Buck Miller, though, began to leap for joy <laughs> and declare, it's the will of God. <laughs> uh, we were there without any visas. Now, they're in a foreign country here, okay? Because the captain of the ship had told us we did not need a visa for an overnight stay. Brother Buck Miller explained to me that they were about to have their first conference on Negroes Island, and I said, we need to get a visa. And Brother Buckmiller said, no, if you go down to immigrations, they will tie you up with red tape, and you won't be able to get to that conference. If anyone questions you about anything, just let me do all the talking. Anybody ever been around <laughs> somebody like that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We went to the airport and started to get on the DC th um, uh, EC3, and there was a Filipino man with a rifle standing there dressed like a military policeman. He said, let me see your visa. <laughs> my heart fell down into my shoes. I was trembling because I was so afraid. I did not have a visa. I had a passport, but no visa. Brother Buckmiller looked at the guard and said, don't you know who these people are? And the guard snapped to attention and saluted us. <laughs> we went to the conference. And 25 people received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Isn't that wonderful? Praise God. Somebody say suffering. Yeah. A week later, we prepared to leave for Thailand. And Brother Buck Miller accompanied us to SASH, S-A-S, Airlines office. And we were able to get a ticket to, Pan to Bangkok on credit. That was unheard of in those days. They said I could pay for my ticket when my ship came to port. <laughs> We walked up and gave the immigration officials our passports, and the officer smiled nicely. He picked up the papers and said, you have been here for a week, and you have no visas. And I said, that is right. And he said, you are under arrest. Do not move 10 feet from this counter. And I said, sir, we must get on that plane. And he said, there is only one man in this nation who can get you on that plane, and he is the invisible man. I did not know what he meant, but I wondered if perhaps he was referring to God or maybe to someone who was difficult to find. A distinguished-looking Filipino man walked towards us. He had traveled on our ship and loved our little daughter, Brenda. And when he appeared before us, uh, Brenda went straight to him, and he said, what are you people doing in the Philippines? He took our passports and walked behind the counter and stamped all three of them and predated each one of them eight days, he was the invisible man. The man who had arrested me said, incredible, incredible. <laughs> now, Bangkok, where they were going, was a city of three million people, 50 miles across in diameter. We got on a bus with a Thai driver who could not speak a word of English. A guide on the bus could speak English, but not enough to help us. She said, where you go? And I replied, I don't know where I go. Uh, the, the man who was supposed to meet them there had a school of about 2,000 students. And I had seen a photograph of it. And I was looking everywhere to try to see that school. I, I do not know if I was bold in faith or just stupid. Anyhow, God helped us. The guide finally said, I can't drive you around all day. And I said, I don't know where to go. And she said, well, I go to airport. And I said, well, I go to airport too. And the driver drove us about one block and turned right. And there was that school right in front of us in the midst of three million people. Isn't that something? And that is how we arrived in Thailand. Billy Cole says, I could not speak their language. I did not know their culture. I did not know or understand them, and they did not know or understand me. Yet God had sent me, and he had anointed me, and in just a few years, we baptized 6,000 people in the name of Jesus. Amen. See, when God sends somebody somewhere, he knows exactly what he's doing. 
Now, that's a major uh, 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 episode there. I don't think anybody in this room would, would, would deny that. I mean, that's quite a deal from 1961 to leave the United States and go to a foreign country where nobody has ever been there before with the apostolic faith. Praise God. Well, and the reason they had us read this story was because this is quite similar to Moses. See, Moses was called upon by God to go to do something, you know, just as big, you know. And, of course, his first, um, you know, um, response was, God, I can't do this. Amen. Has anybody besides me ever found yourself in that kind of a predicament, praise God? Well, you see, we must understand sometimes when God calls us to do something, like the coals, like Moses, like a lot of people in the Bible, it might be a little bit uncomfortable. It might be a little bit out of our box, praise God. You know, sometimes that's what we're going to suffer with. Sometimes we're going to suffer with the spirit of discomfort and being in a strange place. But how many knows that with the Lord, praise God, we can do anything. See, this is what God wants to begin to emphasize. And a lot of times through suffering or discomfort, sometimes God can really begin to emphasize that in Jesus' name. There might be somebody in this room tonight that you might find yourself at the kitchen table of, of somebody's home, never, ever before ever taught a home Bible study. But God called you to do that. And I want you to know, praise God, before we begin the mainframe of this, this Bible study, that God is able to anoint you, praise God, with that kind of an ability in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? Why don't you lift your hands right now and ask the Lord for that anointing in Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. I'm so thankful, Lord God. Oh, I'm thanking you, Jesus. Thanking you for what you're doing, how you're doing it, Lord God, when you do it in Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. Amen and amen. You see up on the screen what you see is you see the scripture there in the fourth chapter of the book of Exodus. And basically Moses is saying, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. Basically what Moses is saying is send somebody else. I don't think that I'm equipped, praise God. And, you know, so sometimes we are going to suffer that a little bit. We're going to suffer like we feel like, man, I, I'm inadequate. I don't know if I could ever do this. But I'm going to tell you something. God can help us to grow, praise God, through that. Now, we may at first think suffering weakens us. And that's what we sometimes really are afraid of. We think that, you know, if I suffer, I'm not going to be able to do something that God wants me to do. But with the right response, it is an opportunity. Somebody say opportunity for personal emotional and spiritual development praise God never forget that that's what God is interested in in your personal life God is trying to help us to begin to develop into the Christian that he wants us to amen and that's why we have to be extremely careful amen we have to be careful that we we overlook something something that we don't think is the will of God might be exactly the will of God for him in Jesus name amen I remember when, um, when I first came out here, um, I was applying for jobs, and, and I mean to tell you, it was a similar situation, you know, um, and it didn't seem like anything was opening up for the first couple of months that we were out here. But I'll never forget, God sent a person into my life and opened up the door for where we could have employment for a couple of months until the door that he saw was going to be opened, opened up in Jesus' name. And what a faith builder, folks. I was way out of my element, praise God. For years, I had never had to struggle that way, praise God. But I'm going to tell you something. It boosted my faith. Sister Carnahan and I, we can tell you that for the first two years we were at, in, in Gillette, amen, we had somebody mailing their ties from somewhere else to this church to support the church in its infancy. Isn't God good? I'm telling you, there were lots of things that were challenging us, praise God, and, and, and it was very, very uncomfortable for us. But through that, we learn, praise God, that God not only supplies, but sometimes when you suffer, or sometimes when you're uncomfortable, praise God, that's when you can really grow in faith in Jesus' name. Come on, I'm here to tell you that, that, that suffering is not that bad of a deal, praise God, once we begin to recognize who's, who's really in charge of it. The scripture teaches us that all things together, amen, which means everything about your life right now, God is putting together, amen. 
so we can understand that God is in it, and that's important for us to do in Jesus' name. Praise God. So personal, emotional, and spiritual development, praise God. Amen. The Bible teaches us that, that God can use suffering to produce something really, really, really good in us. Amen. And this is why we must accept it in Jesus' name. Last week we talked about Moses in another light, that the Scripture says that he chose he chose to suffer with the, with the children of Israel for a season, praise God, because he knew that sin, you know, or not for a season, but he chose to suffer with the children of Israel because he knew that sin only had a season in Jesus' name. And so sometimes this is what we, what we really, really, really have to, to, have to um, ask the Lord to reveal to us. The lesson's big idea is that suffering, if we will allow it, can produce growth in our life. But you know what I've found? I've found, and I'm sure that you have too, that suffering is a lot like forgiveness. It is. A lot of times we don't feel like we should have to. And we must understand that through those two elements, praise God, God can bring tremendous growth into our lives. In Jesus' name. I feel like somebody in here tonight, you're being challenged in those areas. And I'm going to tell you something, praise God. God is able to help raise you, raise that occasion. You might be going through a little bit of suffering right now because you, have, you know that you need to forgive somebody for what they have done. And I'm going to tell you right now, God is able to help you, help you not only to endure that, but to grow in the name of Jesus. Would somebody like to just lift their hand right now and ask the Lord to help you where you're at right now? Come on, I'm telling you, God is able. He is able in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Just ask him. That's all you have to do. The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. Amen. Come on. It's not a bad thing. It's a good thing. It's going to really, really, really pay some tremendous, tremendous um, uh, dividends down the road here. I'm telling you, it is. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Exodus chapter number 3 and verse number 11. Again, we're referring to Moses. We're going to talk about three different characters tonight, okay? The first one we're talking about, obviously, is Moses. Amen. And the second one we're going to talk about is Jesus. Because I've got to, you've got to understand that Jesus himself, as a man, suffered. Praise God. And then the last one that we're going to talk about tonight is the Apostle Paul. I think three good representatives of the apostolic faith. Can you say amen? Amen. And so we can rest assured, praise God, that these people went through some things that are going to be very similar to what we're going to go through. Amen. I have a book. I, I finally found one copy of it. I had two copies of it, and I don't know where the other one is. And if somebody's got it, please bring it back, okay? And it's a good book. I mentioned it last week. In fact, it's the person who had authored this series of lessons. His name is Daniel Seagraves. He is a, um, a professor at um, Urshan Bible College down in St. Louis and an excellent author. I've got several of his books. But years ago, I, I, I bought this book when it first came out. And the title of the book is, is, If God Loves Me, Why Am I Hurting? Anybody ever found themselves in that type of a state? Maybe we had this idea that because God loves us, he's going to keep us from everything that might be tough in life. Amen. And this book has really, really helped my eyes to be open. I mentioned last week that I gave it to a woman um, at the, that, that time that was going through something pretty extremely tough. And she brought the book back to me and said, you know, it didn't take away the suffering, but it helped me to make sense of it. And sometimes that's exactly what God wants to do. We're asking God, a lot of times what we're asking God is to take the thing away. And what God is trying to tell us is that, no, you're going to learn something here, that I'm powerful. Amen. I don't know about you, but Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, yeah, that would have been my prayer too, you know. Well, God, just eliminate that furnace, you know. But God didn't eliminate the furnace, did he? Amen. You got to understand, he put them in the furnace because there was a greater witness to be had. And so this is what you and I can understand about some of the things of God. I don't have all of the answers. You know, I've seen people get healed. I've seen people get saved. I've seen people be, get delivered, praise God. And then I've seen other people that had to go through some things. And I'm going, man, what's, where's the rhyme and the reason? Well, 
I've learned that, praise God, I can question God all I want, but I've got to realize that sometimes God is going to take people through things because his design is for that person to come out of that stronger than ever before in Jesus' name. Now, come on, we a lot of times are asking God for strength, and God will deliberately, or I should say he will allow certain circumstances to come into our life that are designed to bring that strength into our lives. Amen. See, this is what we, we, we have to figure out, and that's where sometimes we can make sense of the suffering. We can begin to see, praise God, that yes, God was there. Amen. What a powerful witness in Jesus' name. Amen. But back to Moses, you know, Moses was, you know, who am I? You know, here he is. And you've got to understand something here, you know. God handpicked Moses. He said, hey, you're the one. You're the one that I, wanna, I want to go down there and to do that. And so Moses says in, in, in Exodus chapter 3 and verse 11, he said unto God, who am I that I should go unto Pharaoh and that I should bring the children of Israel out of Egypt? What a question. Yeah, I don't, th I don't think that's an unfair question. Praise God. But one of the things that God was trying to emphasize was, you know, it really doesn't matter who you are, Moses. Come on. It matters more who you know I am. Amen. Because even though Mo Moses was the mailman, we know who the real deliverer was, don't we? Praise God. And the scripture says, here's God. Here's God's explanation to Moses. And you've got to understand, Moses was a person just like you and me. You know, he had fears. He had comfort zones. He had things in his life that he would probably have rather have done. You've got to understand, he's 80 years old at this time, okay? And so the Bible says, God said, certainly I will be with thee. Somebody say amen. And this shall be a token unto thee that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt. Notice what God's saying. When this happens, praise God, ye shall serve God upon this mountain, praise God. What's God relating to Moses? God's relating to Moses that this is not the end of the journey. This is just going to be part of the journey. And so this is sometimes what we have to look at with suffering. Is that suffering a lot of times is just part of the journey. It's just something that's designed to help us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. And so you can, you can think of those things. One of the things about Christianity today that kind of disturbs me is a lot of people have this idea that God is just going to take a big, huge Holy Ghost bulldozer and he's going to plow down every mountain. He's going to fill up every valley. And he's just going to make some even, you know, just level um, uh, place for us to walk all the time. And that's not, what the bio, that's not the God of the Bible. God doesn't promise us that. God promises us that it's going to be a balance, and we must realize that God is going to allow us to have our ups and our downs. Amen. But if you'll have faith in God, somebody say amen. amen. If I'll have faith in God, we're going to see God in every step of the way. Praise God. We can, we can rest assured that. So, so, so uh, God is assuring Moses that, you know, I'm going with you. I got a plan. Praise God. And I'm going to tell you something. I thank God for the plan. Amen. Then he goes on, then Moses again questioning God. We're still in Exodus chapter 3. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel and shall say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Praise God. His name, praise God. You remember what the response was? Come on. Yeah, I am that I am. You know what that means is that God is the all-sufficient one. Praise God. Amen. But Moses still had a problem. And what Moses' problem was is he did not think that his public speaking ability was sufficient to be a leader. You see, what Moses was doing is what we do a lot of times. Now listen to me. We do this. We all do. Is we look at ourselves. We look at the qualifications that we have. And listen to me, I don't care who you are. There's not one person in this room that you're going to come up against something or, or, uh, or whatever the case is that you're going to say, man, I ain't qualified for this. There's no way I can do this. Amen. But the Bible teaches us the greater is he that's in us than he that's in the world. 
And so a lot of times what God is doing through that is he's helping us to understand the God that is with us, the God that is in us, and the God that is the overcoming factor in our lives. Amen. Think about that the next time. I'm, I'm believing there's several of you in this room. You need to take note of that. Amen. That God isn't always going to smooth everything out. He's just going to give you the ability to know that he's near, praise God, and he'll get you through it in Jesus' name. There's no question about it. My God, your God does not leave us. He doesn't forsake us. So Moses, again, was using his excuses. I'm not a good public speaker. I don't know if you knew this or not, but the scripture teaches us that, that um, you know, that, that he was learned in all the ways of the, of, the, of the Egyptians at one time. Moses had a lot of abilities, praise God, but God put him on the backside of Sinai to find out what kind of abilities he could have with God. Scripture says in Exodus, again, we're still dealing with the character of Moses, and we're talking about growing through suffering. We're talking about going through some things, learning that God is able, praise God. And the Bible says, And Moses said unto the Lord, O my Lord, I am not eloquent, neither heretofore nor since thou hast spoken unto thy servant, but I am slow of speak, speech and slow of tongue. Amen. Just can't quite get those words out. Amen. And sometimes, you know, you've got to be careful with that. I was reading in, in the Bible the other day, and let me show you something here. I think I might have mentioned this in one of the classes I taught here lately. But look at, um, look at Ecclesiastes chapter number 5. Let me show you something here, and this might help. Amen. Ecclesiastes chapter number 5 and verse number number 1. It says, Keep thy foot when thou goest into or goest to the house of God, and be more ready to hear than to give the sacrifice of fools, for they consider not that they do evil. Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. Look at what it says in verse number 2. It says, For God is in heaven, and thou upon the earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Praise God. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I get nervous, you know, I still get nervous. Sometimes I, 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 I say probably a lot more than I should. Amen. What I've got to learn to do and what you and I both have to learn to do is have confidence in God. Amen. It's not the amount of words that we say sometimes. Sometimes it's the quality of words that we say. Scripture says in the book of Proverbs, I was thinking of this as I was getting the lesson. You can go back to the lesson, Sister Garnett. But I was thinking of this. The Bible says that, that uh, a word fitly spoken is like apples of gold in a pitcher of gold or in a pitcher of silver. Picture that. Apples of, of, of gold in a pitcher of silver. What a sight, praise God. And so a lot of times what God wants us to do is just get, fit, get, get good words to say. And this is what God can do. Amen. You think about the, the essence of Moses' message when he went down to Pharaoh. It's kind of like John the Baptist. What was the basis of his marriage or his, his message? Can anybody tell me one word? Repent. Amen. I think after six months he'd get pretty good at preaching that message, wouldn't he? Yeah. But that's the only one that God told him to preach. God didn't tell him to do a whole bunch of miracles. God didn't call him, you know, to raise the dead. You've got to understand, God had someone else in mind in the person of Jesus Christ. And so what we have to understand here, folks, is that God has sometimes a specific calling for us. Sometimes what we need to do is just learn to deliver what God wants us to, to deliver, and that only. And boy, that can, that can help us. And so Moses is saying, listen, I don't have that elegant, ele eloquent speech, you know. And so, you know, what's going to happen when I get down there? Well, believe me, the message is going to get across because Moses' message was just about like John the Baptist. It was basically, let my people go. Now, what part of that, Pharaoh, don't you understand? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. And so sometimes this is what we've got to get back to, is the simplicity of what does God really want us to do? Amen. And God can help us. Can somebody say amen? amen. See, that, like I made reference to before, 
The scripture tells us in the book of Acts, chapter number 7, that Moses, Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians, and he was mighty in words and in deeds. Amen. Now, all of a sudden, he was coming back around, and he was going to have to do this with the help of the Lord. And so you got to understand, it was going to become a brand new thing for him. And this is a lot of what we experience. This is a lot of what we experience. That what we got to learn to do, and this is why we suffer, folks, is because we got to learn to depend on God. We got to learn to let Him, praise God, be shown in the situation instead of us. You see, God didn't need some elegant speaker. All God needed was somebody who would go down there in faith in God and deliver the message that He wanted to be delivered. And you, you and I, we could really, we could learn a lot with that. Sometimes we think we gotta, we gotta solve everybody's problems. Sometimes we think we gotta give everybody all the answers. And that's not what God calls us to do. Because if we would do that, then people would have faith in us. But praise God, if they would begin to see God move in their life, if they would begin to search the scriptures, praise God, and get all of the wisdom they needed out of those scriptures, who are they going to begin to have faith in? Are you beginning to see what God wants to do, praise God? And you see, that's why sometimes we're going to suffer because we're going to take a back seat. And that's what Moses was going to do. Yes, when he lived in Egypt, he was mighty in words and in deeds. You want to know why? Because he had a position of authority in Egypt. Amen. But he wasn't coming back to Egypt with that position of authority. And listen to me, I feel very much of the Holy Ghost right now. You and I must understand, we don't have authority over people. We do not. And boy, you better be careful with that one. Amen. Now, God gives us authority over the demonic kingdom. But he doesn't give us authority over people. And a lot of times we are going to suffer at the hands of people. They're going to ridicule us. They're going to make fun of us. They're going to say that we're nuts. They're going to say we're a bunch of Jesus freaks. I mean, I don't know what they're saying now. It's been too many years since I've been, you know, not been in that, in that arena. But the bottom line is, folks, sometimes we are going to suffer at the hands of people. And you know something? God isn't going to stop that sometimes because that's their choice. Amen. But you know what? What You and I, we can grow because of that. Amen. We can develop some thick skin, praise God. We can raise up and we can lift up our hands and we can worship God and we can get the victory in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. We can become more powerful Christians than we ever have before in the name of Jesus. Come on. I believe this is the will of God. I feel the anointing of God in this place to help somebody get delivered from that mess. Come on. I'm not saying we shouldn't be concerned about people, but listen to me, folks. I'm going to tell you something. There's a message. There's there's a, there's a witness. There's a way that God wants to get across. And even though we suffer at the hands of people, I'm going to tell you something. We're going to grow. We're going to grow in leaps and in bounds and in Jesus' name. Yes, we're going to be embarrassed sometimes. Sometimes we're going to be made fun of. Sometimes we're going to be made a spectacle of. But I'm going to tell you something. If it's for Jesus Christ, if it's for his cause, I'm going to tell you something. It's a good thing in the name of Jesus. What do you say that we lift up our hands right now and we give God the glory? Come on, I got a feeling that many of you have experienced this before. Come on, I'm telling you something. It's just the way it is. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. Sister Carnahan, can you switch that for me? For some reason, this is not working. Amen. There you go. Thank you. Moses asked to be excused from God's call. See, what he was, is he was saying, listen, I, I don't know if I want to do this or not. And all of us are going to be confronted with that reality. There's no question about it. Amen. Even though we do have some inadequacies, it doesn't make any difference. God has equipped you and I, praise God, with the right message. Amen. And I'm thankful for that. Are you? Praise God. Exodus chapter 4 and verse 13, and he said, O oh my Lord, send, I pray thee, by the hand of him whom thou wilt send. There we go. That was our, our beginning scripture. And basically what Moses is saying, send somebody else. Let somebody else do it. Amen. 
And sometimes we have to be careful with that, praise God. Amen. Because God doesn't want to send somebody else. He wants to send you and he wants to send me. Praise God. Exciting. Growing through suffering. Praise God. Even Jesus. Now we talked about Moses. Let's talk about the Son of Man. Let's talk about Jesus Christ. And as the Son of Man, he did suffer. Praise God. It says even Jesus learned obedience by the things which he suffered. Praise God. Let's look at the scripture that talks about that. Look at, um, look at Hebrews chapter number 5. Let me show you this. Hebrews chapter number 5. The Bible talks about this. In, in that regard, if I can get there real quick here. Scripture says in chapter number 5 of Hebrews, amen, talks about Jesus as a high priest, talks about the, some of the things that he had to do in the name of Jesus. The Bible says in verse number 7, verse number 7, Hebrews chapter 5 and verse number 7, now this is in reference to Jesus now. It says, who in the days of his flesh... It says, when he had offered up prayers and supplications with strong crying and tears unto him that was able to save him from death and was heard in that he feared, praise God. Go to verse number 8 then. The Bible says, though he were a son, this is Jesus, it says, yet learned he obedience. Now look at this. You need to mark this in your Bible. The Bible says, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. You see that? Amen. And so Jesus himself suffered things. He was the son of man, praise God. He was also had the spirit of God in him, praise God. But he had to learn, to, uh, you know, that suffering, praise God, was, was, was the will of God. Amen. I'm thinking of that prayer that was prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. You know, remember that? Amen. And I, I, that was not just a five-minute prayer, folks. That was a, that was a several-hour prayer. Amen. If it be possible, take this cup from me. Wow. Amen. But the Bible says that it was settled with the statement, nevertheless. Come on, can anybody quote that? Yeah. Listen to me, folks. You and I are going to suffer sometimes in the flesh by making that type of a proclamation. Sometimes the will of God is going to allow us to go through some things and we're going to feel some uncomfortableness and we're going to feel some, some aloneness and all of that kind of a business. But I'm going to tell you something, in those kind of times, we can begin to sense God in a way we never have before in the name of Jesus. And that's, again, how we can begin to make sense of this suffering, that we know that if we suffer according to the will of God, Come on, if we suffer according to the will of God, you can rest assured that God has some growth in mind that he wants to bring to each and every one of you. Do you remember here a few weeks ago, I don't know, maybe now it's been maybe several months, I brought four different situations into, your, in, in, into the situation. That there's four different things that are going to happen to you no matter who you are, where you're at. It doesn't make any difference if... If you go to church in San Diego or if you go to church in Portland, Maine, it doesn't make any difference. You're going to have these things. And that is trouble, trespasses, temptation, and trials. All of us are going to have those things as Christians. And these things are designed for certain things. For instance, um, uh, trespasses. Jesus said offenses are going to come. People are going to do you wrong, praise God. What is the response to somebody or, or that we need to have when somebody does us wrong? What is that response? Yeah, we need to learn how to forgive, don't we? Hey, is there suffering in forgiveness? You better believe there is. How about trials? Amen. You remember what trials are designed by God to do? Remember that? Trials are designed by God to bring us closer to him. So God is going to allow trials to come into our life. It's the trying of our faith that bringeth patience. And so you and I, we must understand that we're going to develop these things through trials. But don't you tell me that we're not going to suffer during those trials. Come on, that would be a lie. That's just the way it is. And so again, I'm just making reference to Jesus now. Jesus had to learn these things. He went through these trials, praise God. And then temptations. Yeah, You've heard the story, well, everybody else is doing it. Come on, sometimes you and I are going to be called by God not to say a word, but to walk away. And oh boy, are they going to start name-calling, aren't they? 
They're going to start accusing. They're going to start, you know, making those accusations. And somebody said one time, you know, maybe those sticks and stones, you know, hurt, but, you know, words can hurt too. I'm telling you, folks, you're going to suffer. I'm going to suffer, but it's going to help us to become better people. Amen. The last one we talked about was the idea of trouble. And trouble is when we make mistakes. Sometimes we do things wrong. Sometimes we get ahead of the plan of God. And we must understand, praise God, like everybody else in the Bible, God does forgive us. Come on, can somebody say amen? But sometimes we are going to suffer. And so you must understand the world we live in is full of these things. Amen. Whether you're a Christian or not, you're going to have these things. But isn't it nice to know that all things together work for the good? Come on, everything that is in the kingdom of God right now that is coming to you, uh, that's, that's his will, praise God, works for the good for those that love God and are called according to his purpose. And so you and I can understand that there's a higher thing here, praise God. And so Jesus taught us. Come on, he didn't just tell us, he taught us. He learned obedience by the things which he suffered, amen. And so if he suffered, I'm going to tell you something, folks, we're going to suffer. But let me just put this little, this little um, uh, uh, frosting on it. He was glorified. Come on, and so are we going to be glorified. You see, the thing of it is, we have to share in these things, but we're also going to share in the glory of God, in the name of Jesus. And that's what you and I have to look forward to. Always forget, folks, life is short. James said it's like a mist. We're here for a while and then we're gone, praise God. But eternity is forever. And you and I, we're going to be with the Lord forever in the name of Jesus. We're going to have eyes that are going to see the things that he sees. We're going to have the whole view, praise God. This is what God promises us. And that's why we can comfort ourselves in these trials, in these temptations, in these trespasses. And even when we make mistakes, we can pick it up, praise God, and we can say, God forgives me. I'm going to move on. There might be some time of restoration that needs to take place in my life, but praise God, God is going to be able to help me get through it in Jesus' name. Can somebody say amen? I'm telling you, folks, we are not without hope in Jesus' name. Hebrews said, though he were a son, yet learned he obedience by the things which he suffered. Never forget that. Jesus, as a man, had to learn. Amen. I know as God, he knew everything, but as a man, he had to learn. And so this is what God does in our life. He puts things in our life that will bring about what it's talking about up here, spiritual growth. That's what God wants to see in your life. So we talked about Moses, and Moses was a man that had his, own, had his trials, he had his temptations, he had everything just like you and I, praise God, but he got through on the other side. I'm thinking of a mistake that Moses made. Can anybody think of a big mistake that Moses made? Yeah, well, those are good ones. Yeah, the, the one when he killed the Egyptian, yeah, that was a mistake. It was. I can imagine the fear came on his life, and he just barely escaped. But the mistake I was thinking of is what somebody else said when he, when he hit that rock. Amen. Because of that mistake, God said, you're not going into the, into the um, promised land. Remember that? Amen. And so Moses had to live with that. He had to live with that, praise God. But I don't see anywhere where Moses got a bad attitude. Amen. God forgave him and moved on, praise God. Put Joshua in his place, and I'm going to tell you something, everything turned out. So sometimes we do make mistakes, praise God. Now, Paul's thorn, I think we made reference to this last week or the week before. You know, here was another situation where, where a man of God, he's got something happening in his life, and he's like us. Well, God, let's just take care of this thing, and let's not just take care of it, but let's get rid of it. Yeah, let's just take the thing out of our life. Amen. And we have to understand that Paul's thorn in the flesh became an occasion for spiritual growth. God had a plan. Amen. And that spiritual growth was for Paul to become a better Christian. Amen. Bible teaches us this in, um, 
in uh, 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 Second Corinthians chapter number 12. This is where Paul is talking about, you know, um, uh, the things that were in his life prior to coming to God and all that kind of business, or not prior to God, but what happened to him after he came to the Lord. I don't know if you were aware of this, but in the 14th chapter of the book of Acts, you can find this story, and in my opinion, this is where it happened, where he went to, I think it was Lystra, and the Bible says he was preaching the gospel there. And the Bible says there was such resistance that they stoned Paul. Now, don't tell me that didn't hurt. Yeah, they stoned him. And the Bible says they drug him out of the city and they thought he was dead. But during that time when that happened, this is when Paul got one of his greatest revelations. Isn't that amazing? Amen. You know, that's something we have to ask ourselves. How much of God do I really want? And how much of God am I willing to suffer for so that I can get it? Yep. See, it's one of those things where we don't think we should have to. But God says, hey, it's a way that I've gotten that will really implant some things. The scripture says that Paul got these revelations. You can read this for yourself in the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians. It talks about the fact that, that um, he was caught up in, into paradise or the third heaven. I believe we're talking about the same thing. That would have been quite a revelation, wouldn't it? Amen. But because of that revelation, God said, I'm going to have to put a buffer in your life. And this is what Paul is saying here in 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. He says, unless I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me, notice that, a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan, to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Wow. You know, I don't know how long it took Moses, or not Moses, but Paul to figure that out. I don't know. Amen. But, you know, I'm, uh, I'm sure he was glad, and, and I don't know about you, but there's been times in my life when certain things were happening. Amen. Um, uh, I won't go into the details, but God one time showed me one of the reasons why he sent me out here. Amen. And it had to do with some of the things that happened back there. And boy, I mean to tell you, folks, it was quite an eyeful. It was quite a, a revelation. And I thank God for that. I can stand here tonight and assure you that God knows what he's doing. He does. He knows what he's doing. Amen. And just like we need to trust God in, in a lot of areas of our life, this is one of the areas that we really, really, really need to, to deepen our trust in God. That if, if something is coming our way that maybe is a little bit uncomfortable or maybe a little bit out of the box, we've got this confidence, praise God, that God is going to not only get us through it, but he's going to help us to be stronger because of it. Amen. Hey, listen to me. Any amount of grace that you can get into your life any more amount of grace that you can get into your life is going to be nothing but more and more strength for you in Jesus' name. And so consider that. Consider that. His grace. And this is what Paul learned. Paul, again, in 2 Corinthians 12 and 9 says, And he said unto me, now this is Paul, My grace is sufficient for thee, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. Wow, what a revelation. I don't have to be strong. I need to be strong in Him. Amen. And so all the time what we're, we're sometimes asking God to do is to build us, our muscles up. And God is saying, no, I got this covered. What you need to do is just be strong in me. Depend on me. Praise God. Um, Jesus in His um, dissertation to the... Um, um, in the book of um, Matthew, chapter number 5, this is one of uh, the famous ones. Remember that? The, the Sermon on the Mount. Can anybody quote the very first one? Blessed are the what? The poor in spirit. It says, for theirs is the kingdom of God. If you do a thorough study of that, that's really referring to blessed are those that are totally dependent on God. Amen. In my weakness, in your weakness, he is made strong, praise God. And he gets the glory. Now, like I told you before, he's going to share that glory down the road. But for now, we got to be just like Jesus. we got to be willing to suffer so that we can learn, praise God. Amen. You can't tell me the cross was easy. In fact, a lot of times when I'm going through things that I think are pretty tough, I'm going to tell you something. 
you know, I think about the cross and what that represented. And believe me, it doesn't take long for me to think, you know, what I'm going through really isn't that bad. Can somebody say amen? Yeah, it's the truth, folks. I'm going to tell you something. It is the truth. In fact, let me show you something here. Amen. I, I, I was thinking of this the other day um, um, in the book of 2 Corinthians. I think it's 2 Corinthians. Yeah. Here it is. The Bible says, it says in verse number 6, second, you don't have to put it up on the screen. I'll just read it to you. 2 Corinthians 4 and 6. You can write this down. It says, For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But it says in verse number 7, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. See, there's where it's got to go. The glory's got to be, or the power has got to be of God and not of us. That's why in our weakness, God is made strong. And that's why God isn't going to give you that type of a, of a situation where you're going to become the strong person. See, this is what we've got to be very careful. What he's going to do is he's going to make himself strong so that people will have faith in him. And I'm going to tell you something. We already know that having faith in God is what saves us, isn't it? Come on, having faith in God is what helps us to be delivered in Jesus' name. Having faith in God is what helps us to go through it in its entirety in Jesus' name. Come on, Paul learned that too. Just like Jesus, he had to learn the things of God through the things which he suffered. And I know this isn't a popular message because in today's world, we don't want to do it. It's just like forgiveness. A lot of times we don't feel like we should have to. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. That is wrong. We need and have to do it. It's what builds character in us. It's what gives us power and strength in God. Can somebody give me an amen? Amen. amen. Praise God. Paul chose to embrace the suffering as a friend. That's what he did. That's what helped him, praise God, to get through the things that he could get through in Jesus' name. Praise God. You know, my, maybe what this lesson is doing or maybe what these lessons are doing for you is helping you to identify some of the suffering that's going on in your life. And maybe this can be something that can help you, praise God, to know that God's grace is sufficient for you. Amen. You know, in this, um, um, uh, this series of lessons and in this book, praise God, Brother Seagraves goes through some things and, and he mentions some things that I think that are, that, are, that are extremely important, praise God. You know, one of the chapters I, I remember reading this was trusting God in our suffering, praise God. Learning how to trust God, really say, God, I'm, I'm not going to be moved, praise God. And then he uses the example, which we all are pretty familiar with. He uses the example of Job, you know. Let me go back and let me make reference to something here. Look at Job, the, the uh, first chapter. We kind of equate this book to a book of suffering and and sometimes the Bible, or the Bible even makes reference to that we know the, the uh, long suffering of Job and so on and so forth. But let me show you something here in the book of Job, or let me just maybe remind you of something in the name of Jesus. Look at Job chapter number one. And the Bible says, this is after trial after trial is coming into Job's life. And in verse number, number 20, the scripture says after all of these things, verse number, or chapter number 1 and verse number 20, it says, Then Job arose and rent, or he tore his mantle, which was a, a type of, of, of humility, and he said, and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshipped. Scripture says, he said, now this is Job's statement, Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave and the Lord hath taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Look at verse number 22. I don't know about you, but what a goal. The scripture says, And in all this Job sinned not, nor charged or accused God foolishly. Wow. I'm telling you, folks, you know, you can talk about the patience of, of Job. 
But wow, the faith of Job is something that I believe God wants to help each and every one of us to have. Amen. To say, hey, you know, I don't understand it all. I have no idea what exactly is going to be the end result, but I have enough faith in God that I can go through this. I can trust Him. I can still raise my hands. I can still lift Him up, praise God, and, and, and not do it out of some fakery, praise God, because I know that my God not is only able to deliver me, but He's able to carry me all the way through the trial in Jesus' name. Come on, have you experienced that from the Lord yet? Have you? Come on, if you have, I think it'd be a good idea just to lift up your hand right now and say, God, I thank you for that. Come on, I'm telling you, I think everybody is going to experience that from time to time. Come on, it's a good thing. That is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's a growing thing in Jesus' name. Come on, like Paul learned to do. He learned to say, hey, that suffering isn't, that, isn't, isn't the end of the world, praise God. It can become something that will help me to get closer to the Lord in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And so finally, Paul, of course, giving us this example, we talked about Moses, and of course we talked about Jesus, and last of all, we talked about Paul, and we're talking about growing. All three of these have that epithet, that they grew in their suffering. And I believe this is what God wants to do for each and every one of us, praise God. Look at the scripture up on the screen. Now, this is Paul's realization. This is the conclusion that he came to. Wherefore, I take pleasure. Whoa. I don't, you know, woe is me anymore, but I take pleasure in infirmities. The word infirmities just simply means weaknesses. It says in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, look at this. He discovered, praise God, there's a strength that comes into my life like I have never seen before. Amen. Listen to me, you can try to be strong in your own abilities, and I'm not saying you won't get some of it. You won't, you won't feel some effects of that. But I'm going to tell you something, it's like programs. You know, we can, we, can, we can come up with a good program, but it'll never last. And it's the same thing with our strength. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you do in life, how many things you, good things you bring to the table. You know, you've got to understand, one of these days we're going to be looking at death right, right in the eyes. And you see, this is what God is trying to prepare us. He's trying to help us to understand, praise God, that in our weaknesses, that's when he can become strong, praise God. Oh, we love to read the stories of, of, of David, you know, um, the slaying the giant. And I'm not saying that those aren't kind of things that won't happen to us periodically in our lives. But listen, I think what we need as Christians is we need the balance. Amen. We need to realize that there are times when God is going to allow certain things to happen so that we can grow stronger in the Lord and in the power of His might in Jesus' name. How many here have experienced that already in your life? Praise God. Have you experienced strength in the Lord? Okay, let's stand to our feet, praise God, and let's, let's ask the Lord to help us not only to continue in that light, but to help us to see it clearer in Jesus' name. How many would like some clear vision on some suffering that are in, that's in your life right now? Would you like some clear vision? Praise God. I believe the Lord is in this place right now for that to happen. Amen. I don't have the answers for you. I don't have the answers, but I know that Jesus Christ has those answers for you right now in the name of Jesus. Let's lift up our hands right now. And let's ask the Lord to help us. Let's ask God to help us to see clearer than ever before in the name of Jesus. There's no question about it. We go through some tough things. There's no question about it that there's some hard things that happen, praise God. But God is there. He's not only there, praise God, to raise us up, but he's there to give us clear understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, I'm telling you, in the Bible it teaches us, praise God, that when we come into the presence of the Lord, we can expect God to give us some clear understanding of things that's happening. That might not eliminate the trial. That might not eliminate the trespass. That might not eliminate the trouble or the, or, 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 or the temptation, but I'm here to tell you, it will give you clear understanding of what God wants from you in the 
name of Jesus. Come on, I'm telling you, I feel strength in this place tonight. I feel like we can have hope in the Lord. I feel like we can grow like never before in the name of Jesus. Let's, let's trust the Lord, praise God, for these kind of things. Come on, every day, any day, come on. We don't have to worry. God is able, praise God, in the name of Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you, it doesn't matter how what the trial is. It doesn't matter how long it's been going on. I'm here to tell you, our God is able in the name of Jesus. Come on, I'm feeling somebody here is open for some strength in the Lord right now in Jesus name let's let him do that come on let's let him do that let's, let's let God give us more and more and more confidence in him let's let God give us more and more faith in the things that he that that he is doing come on let's let God put some grace I'm telling you the Bible says he giveth more grace to them that humble themselves before him in Jesus name come on we can do that God will do that every day in our lives if we'll come to him and we'll ask in Jesus name I'm so thankful, Lord God. I'm so thankful. Come on, let's just praise him together one more time. Come on, let's praise him together in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Mm. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, I'm telling you, God can help us no matter what in the name of Jesus. Oh, blessed be to the name of the Lord. Blessed be to the name of the Lord. So thankful for what God is doing. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah in Jesus' name. Praise God. Don't forget our service is coming up this weekend. We're going to continue to move on. We're on a journey, folks. We're on the right journey, too, in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you as you continue your journey. And let suffering, praise God, not be something that will discourage, but something that can ultimately encourage you in Jesus' name. God bless you. You're dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.